Chat. Hello and welcome to everyone that's here uh, so far. Uh, you guys can feel free to turn on your cameras if you want. You won't be on the recording because it will only record those who are unmuted, which you guys are not able to unmute yourself. So if you want to uh, <laughs> show your face, uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, so during this talk story session about Slatki and Kihoalu and tunings and techniques, if you guys have questions, comments, things you want to ask, things you want to know, um, you are going to input those into the chat. So if you've never used Zoom before, on the bottom uh, toolbar, you'll see a section that says chat. And you can type into the chat any question that you might have or um, something you may want to know about our guest today. So being that we are talking about Kihoalu today and Slacky, I feel very fortunate to have with us two masters of Slacky. Uh, and from two different schools. So uh, first we have joining us from, are you in Waimea, Sunny? Yes. You're still traveling. Joining no. us all the way, <laughs> hailing from Waimea, Hawaii. Uh, we have Sunny Lin, uh, Slack Key Master, and sitting here next to me, we have a Slack Key Master from our Kaneohe, Kahalu'u, uh, who is my predecessor at Windward Community College for many, many years, recently retired, uh, Ron Lu. So welcome to both of you and grateful that you guys- Aloha. Uh, thank Aloha. you for inviting me. I, I feel honored. So let's start um, from the beginning. So uh, Sunny, we'll start with you. Um, how did you first uh, encounter or learn Kihoalu or Slaki? Uh, for me, um, growing up in Kuala, we, we didn't have um, a whole lot of um, um, ways to hear music because like KCC would like was on the AM, I think it would like fade in and fade out. So that's how we kind of listen to music. You know, we, would, we would only hear the, that, and you know, and we thought that was the way radio was when we were growing up. You know, that's all we heard. <laughs> and um and then one of my um my mom's brother um he had this guitar that he had and he brought it over to our house and he, he left it but it was an electric guitar that um had strings but he didn't have an amplifier so our home back then was built in the 70s so the really the hicks homes was really popular and the thing about hicks homes that they were made out of the walls was redwood so I would actually sit in the corner of the living room and actually put the guitar against the wall. And I would lean on the, I put my ear against the wall so I could hear the guitar. And so that's how I started to play. And I started, he taught me like tarot patch. So that's all I knew. I didn't know how to play like a standard guitar. So I started from there. And I started, I used to go to all the parties, but even when you're young, you're usually the kids that, outside of the party running around playing in the dark. Well, this party was at Kohala at Keo Keo Beach Park. I had to pass where the musicians were playing to get to the bathroom. And then I was in the bathroom and I was listening to this song. Oh, I was listening to the guys playing. I was like, what is that song? I had no idea that at the time I was listening to Gabby and Atta play. <laughs> they, they used to come to Kohala. They came to all these small little towns and played music. So they were playing. So I came out and I sat down and I just watched these two guys play. And I, was, I was just amazed by the sound that I was hearing. Never heard anything like that because my tarot patch guitar didn't sound like that also. So, that was, so, that, so my interest became more from that point on. So I just started playing just tarot patch, like really simple stuff. And so I started playing with my mom and my dad because I was really young and go perform at parties and stuff. And then we was at a party in Honoka'a where um, my dad tells me, see the guy up there playing the guitar? So I me and your mom met him when we were first married, just living up in Mountain View. So his name was Fred Punahua. So Uncle Fred was actually playing at the party. So we went up, we played after him. And after he saw me playing, 
he uh, he told my parents he wanted to come and teach me how to play. So he had this one friend, he went by the name Hano Hano. So the guy brought him to Kohala and uh, left him at our house for a couple of weeks. So that's how I, I learned Uncle Fred became my only um, slacky teacher was from that moment on. But up until that point, I never played standard guitar. So Uncle Fred taught me slacky and Towards the end of his stay, he told me his vision was that he had to play both. He said the thing in the Hawaiian music, he said his, his vi vi um, vision of the future was that you couldn't even do just one. You had to do both. So he taught me how to t play standard. So my whole thought process prior to Uncle Fred was only slacky. And then it changed. And then he taught me how to play standard guitar. So that's kind of my beginning of it all. Perfect. Okay, so uh, that was Sunny's beginning. Ron, um, why don't you go ahead and tell me your your beginning <laughs> of, of Slack key? All right, thank you. Um, well, like many teenagers, I dabbled with some rock and roll. Didn't really know how to play the guitar. Bought me a chord book and a tuner and um, listen to rock and roll for a while. But then I encountered um, a chance meeting at one of the beach parks. As the sun was going down, I heard somebody playing this beautiful music. And I, I drew closer to this uh, gentleman who was playing and I asked him, but what is that you're playing? You know, it wasn't rock and roll, but I, I loved it. He said, uh, I'm playing some keyboard. And uh, from the time I was maybe 11 till the time I was 20 something, I, I asked everybody I knew if they knew anybody who taught slack key. And um, some people said they would, they knew how to play slack key, but they wouldn't teach me because, you know, the, the tunings were proprietary. The, the family owned it, and we remember you couldn't you couldn't get access. I met a woman by the name of Aina Kiawe one day, and I shared my sad my sad tale with her that I had been on this quest to acquire some slacky knowledge and. Um, that I was having a difficult time. And she said, well, I know somebody, but I don't know. You know, she said, my, my niece teaches Kihualo. And I said, well, could, could you ask her? So I, I didn't have a phone number, but I met her somewhere <laughs> at Long's drugstore. And I said, well, auntie, what happened? Did you ask her? Well, I did ask her and she said, she'd be willing to take you on a trial basis. Trial basis. <laughs> so, so she set up this appointment and, and I said, and I asked, so what's the name of this instructor? It's a slacky teacher, she said. Her name is Alice Namake Lua. And I was excited, couldn't sleep. On the day of the lesson, and, and by the way, I, up to that point, I only dabbled in a little bit of standard, whatever rock tunes I could figure out by ear, but I knew nothing about slack. So I went to her home and uh, was greeted by her and I had all these pencils in my pocket. I had some tab paper that I used to making notes. And I had a recorder that I plugged into the wall, you know. And all the while she was watching me do this. I, I didn't realize that wasn't in keeping with the Hawaiian way of learning. And, and you know what, I do appreciate that today. But that first meeting, that first meeting was a total shock to me because as soon as I plugged in my recorder and 
I sat down proudly, you know, waiting for my lesson. She said to me, I for you, my boy. Oh, taking notes. Two, there'd be no questions. Because I was just about to ask her, well, how? No question. Three, there'd be no recording of anything. And so naturally, by this time, I was totally freaked out. So I, so I asked, well, how will I learn then? And she looked at me kind of disgusted and said, well, use your PPL. Use your markers. Use your pu'u vai. And I was like, oh. I thought to myself, how foolish. I should have thought of that. And you know what's funny is <laughs> probably in your mind, you were thinking, like, you know, as a young person would, I'm going to be the best student she ever had. Right. I'm going to be prepared. Like in your mind, you're like, I got my notepaper. <laughs> I'm going to shoot, like, because, you know, nowadays that's the perception of a good student. Like, right. nowadays, if you show up to my class and I'm like, hey, but you guys don't have anything to write with, take notes. They go, <laughs> they go, they go, oh, what you mean? Yeah. Oh, you know, they go, <laughs> I would be like, hey, you guys like learn or what? And, <laughs> and so then, and it, or if I was like, Hey, you guys have any questions? If students don't ask questions, I'm like, oh, this class, they don't like learn, right? So that's like the ideal student before what you were, right. what you were doing, where in that, in her mind, what you were doing was like, what are you doing? Right, you know, like, exactly. That was a question yeah. on her. That was a question, like, what are you doing? You know, um, I thought you said you wanted to learn to play slack key. You know, yeah. and um, and then she said, "Oh, let me tune your guitar." So my guitar had been tuned to standard. She started slacking some strings, you know, and naturally, I freaked because I had my I, I was totally disoriented. I, you know, what I mean, if you take somebody who plays standard and tune three strings down or four. <laughs> Yeah, you can't play anything now, right? You know, and then she said to me, um, uh, "So I'm going to I'm going to teach you what I know, and then you know, as soon as I'm done playing this little figure, I want you to do what I'm doing." And I didn't realize when she said to me, "I want you to do what I'm doing." that I had to use the exact fingers of the left hand on the neck and the fingers of the right hand that she was using. I thought an approximation would be good, you know, more or less. Yeah, mostly less, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so she started playing this, this uh, figure like, Played it twice. And then she asked me, how was that? I said, oh, that's what I'm here for. And then I didn't realize it would be my turn to play what she had just done. And uh, needless to say, what I played, terrible. <laughs> and, and she just came back with, I thought, I thought you said you're interested in playing the skill of all of you know, and, and I, I, I got the feeling like the door was starting to close already. And I, and I, I only just sat down a few moments ago. Yeah. So, so Sunny, uh, what was your, um, what tunings were you, uh, so 
you were in Jiwahine. Jiwahine, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> what tunings did Uncle Fred teach you? Um, so Uncle Fred actually his so his tuning was almost like similar to like um Jabbity Mauna Law, except that the bass is backwards. So you instead of having the low, um so I'm actually in B flat. Instead of having the low B flat, you have a low F. And you have a your B flat is a it's almost like tarot pass, so you Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the, that was Uncle Fred's tuning. Oh, sorry, I try. We can put the, hang on, let me put the guitar on. So the thing with song, song like that. Oh, you want to you want to play something of Uncle Fred's in that tuning? song that statement in that mm -hmm. really is when i hear that i hear that as like that's at the alice's right. signature right? that is you know and, and that that is the um one of the reasons why i feel like you know these older hawaiian musicians a mm -hmm. lot of times they didn't teach right because like these families like at the alice would put that in most of her songs you know, almost every same, song almost every song <laughs> and so that became like her stamp right right, right. you know so it, it's almost like a kumuhula yeah, right so yeah. if you're playing your song in in and and you do that right in in the song that you're playing immediately someone who knows slacky is going to say right. that's one of happy alice's students yeah so mm -hmm. that's why i think a lot of the families were a little protective of their tunings right. too because it's like a lot of these families had the it was it was not just the tuning, but it's like this is our stamp. Right. This that our family plays. When you hear this part, right, right. you will know that that's our family playing this. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. You know, and like me, how they had Bella Kahal. Yeah. You know, that was one of their styles. Yeah. You know, uh, at the Alice had that. You know, even Kalapana, the style of playing in Kalapana. There's a distinct style to the way they that led with them <laughs> play. You know, like, yeah. and it's funny because, I mean, Sonny knows. And you know too, but you get all these guys that come out of Kalapana and you just assume they all play like Ledward. Right. <laughs> but right, but but what you don't realize is that's just the, the that's like Kalapana style of right. Kihoalu, like Kaika, Marzo. That's a, that's their sound. That's their sound. All that's right. their community. That's what they hear. Right, Sonny? Am I wrong with that? Well that's that and that that is correct. And that, I was actually oh hang on, Trey. Yeah, right, right, right. Sorry. You sound good. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so I was actually the exception to the rule because Uncle Fred came and taught me. He came to Koala and taught me how to play that same style. And so that's, so my whole foundation was pretty much based around the same style, Uncle Fred. And, <clears throat> which is when um, I came to Honolulu when I was really young. Everybody's like, wow, you sound like Leonard. I said, actually, uh, I think me and Leonard sound like his uncle. Because I think we learned, we, we learned from him. Yeah, right. But I, you know, I thought was, I thought it was so cool that everybody was like, "Wow, I never know anybody play play like Larry." Oh, uh, yeah. So there's a few more. I'm not the only one from the Big Island. There's a few more of us that was actually already playing. You know, this pretty much the the same style, like yeah. like, like that, the Kalapana yeah. style. Yeah, it's me It's amazing. Um, I, and there's all different styles and techniques in Slaki. Now, um, Ron, I know you shared about learning from Auntie Alice, but I, I remember in, in a personal conversation one day, you also shared that 
uh, you were able to have a lesson or two with uh, John Almeida. Is that correct? Right, right. And how did I remember he said <laughs> John Almeida was a little different. His was like he humbled you right away. Oh, well, yeah, let me tell you the story. So I had humbled my dad for, I don't know, 11 years. From the time I was five to the time I was 11. So my dad, Papa, can, can I learn to play guitar? You know, and he lived through his depression and he said, no son of mine gonna or, you know, every can I know is some kind of bum, dramatic, and no, the answer is no. And, and I asked every year and twice a year and I got no and no. And so finally he relented. I guess I was about 11. He said, okay, I'm going to buy you a guitar and I'll get you lessons. And I thought I was going to get some rock and roll lessons. Right. To my surprise, right? We're driving down to Kalihi and we're ushered into this room that's sort of dark. And I'm kind of mystified because we're like, what am I like, How does anyone see in here? Right, right. About what? And this guy comes out. He says, Hi, I'm Uncle John. You know, and, and now I'm, I'm really pissed at my dad. It's like, Oh, looks like this guy can't see, man. How can he teach me something? So we sit down and he asked me, what do you want to learn to play? I said, I want to learn to play chords, you know? He said, well, if you sign up for lessons, I'll teach you a little upright bass, I'll teach you some lele, I'll teach you some guitar, I'll teach you some mandolin, and i teach you some guitar. And then he proceeds to play all the instruments, right? But prior to that, I thought I was pretty hot because I could play some rock and roll, you know. So when he got done, he said, why don't you play me something? And I kind of declined rapidly, you know. I, <laughs> you just saw him play I got, every instrument. I got, I got put in my place, and he was. Yeah. And I said, oh, actually, I'd like to if I can, you know, I was put in my place and humility. And this guy could, yeah, and um, and he had the ears, he and he had some, some ears, yeah. And I swear he had some rhythms that I haven't heard since he yeah. passed, you know, yeah. And, and and a lot of that might be like part of that signature that we were that we were um, talking about. Once again, I just want to reiterate to any of you that are uh, listening to this live, if you guys have any questions that you want to put in the chat for either Sonny or Ron, uh, I encourage it. Uh, we won't view it as uh, disrespectful on Zoom. The beauty of Zoom is that. You can ask questions uh, like without feeling rude to interrupt. You just type them in. As soon as you think of them, think of them, type them in. And if we uh, see it, which it's on the screen above, if you see us looking at the screen up here, it's because we're watching the the um, recording. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, these are two excellent resources for uh, answers about Slack key. So Sunny, what um, what stylistic uh, things do you think people need to be aware of? And I'll ask both of you guys this question and you can both kind of think and maybe it's the same after. Okay. But what stylistic things are kind of your, the things that when you hear them, it's the trademark of Slaki because, and I'll preface this by saying, there is a difference between Slaki and alternate tuning. You know, slack key is a style of playing mm -hmm. the guitar, not just a tuning. Right. So what I what I want, I'll start with Sunny. What are some things that you listen for in slack key that you when you hear you go, oh, that's kiho alu, versus just oh, that's alternate tuning. What are some things that some techniques, uh, whether it's playing techniques or 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 sounds that that you listen for, Sunny? Um, a lot a lot of it is um uh, the those who 
study the traditional on the old no regular real traditional style um you can t- kind of tell that right away because they're doing like the alternate bass line which is one along with the rhythm whether and whether they're sliding or they're just filling filling in that extra thing and the turnarounds is unique and i always tell um students that i teach now that the tunings are not unique to us to hawaii what is unique is the way that we play it and you can tell because a lot of local guys and and you kind of know this and you guys both should know this by now we can be listening to the radio we're going to hear somebody play we're going by, by the way they did like their turn around we kind of know who's already playing that right because because it's, it's almost becomes like your, your trademark that if you don't you do it long enough everybody will know that that's the way you do your your thing so i i, I kind of pay attention to that and i like but there's a whole another generation of younger guys are coming along and they're kind of even modifying parts of that even kind of but so i you know that's kind of the gray area on like what do we call it like more contemporary slacky right. i don't know right. what the answer is you yeah. know but it's 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 a process that we know the thing when evolved anyway you know whether we like it or not because we kind of kind of evolved from the guys that we learn from and our influences besides the great slacky masters you know who is the outside influence for me one of my main influences growing up was uh carlos santana so i get a lot of stuff that when in way the way when i play is some of his influence is in even though i play in hawaiian some of his influence still is in the way that i play oh cool Ron, what are some things that you're listening for when you hear uh, Kiho Alu? Well, like Sonny said, um, one of the prominent things is the, the, the bass line that you're working. Um, secondly, I listen for some chords. Thirdly, I listen to, like Sonny was saying, the turnarounds, what, what some might call the vamps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and basically, your songs are based around vamps. Right. Your vamps are your variations. Yeah. And, and I think the fourth thing, which is kind of like hard to put into words, but I really feel that slack is about a feel. Right. It's not, it's not just doing fancy licks. Mm. You know, like when you listen to the early Gabby recordings, like when he's doing Le Nani all by himself, yeah? That, that hypnotic rhythm that he's doing, you know, just killer. And to this day, I'm still hooked on that, you know? One guy, not a whole band. Right. Uh, so there is this, this really unique rhythm that people have, have uh, captured, you know? And, and we, we, we all try to emulate. Yeah. No, yeah, and I think that, that those are great things. And you know, uh, Kiho Alu, like, like uh you guys mentioned you know slack key there is this uh classical style that we hear of slack mm-hmm. key mm-hmm. i always avoid my students know i avoid the word traditional with mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. you know but there is a classical slack key and we see people nowadays branching out you know you know to add some some newer techniques and newer sounds that maybe weren't there before mm-hmm. but you know, for that that classical style of slacky, I think mm-hmm. those things that you guys are pointing to, those are definitely indicators. Another one is the hammer-ons and pull-offs. Right, right, right. You know, that's another thing stylistically that yep. is very much a part of Kiho Alu that maybe isn't in all the other um, yep. styles of, of, of Kiho Alu or slacky yeah. playing. Hammer-ons, pull-offs, triplets. Right. Chimes. Chimes, brushes. Brushes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are all things that are that are really when you when you hear it, you know, for me, it's easy, and I'm sure you guys feel the same. If I'm if I lined up a hundred different slap key recordings, <laughs> you would be able to pick out oh yeah, like this, the ones that were recorded within the last 10 years, you know, right. some of the ones. Right. that were recorded within the last 15, 20 years. Right. 
you say, oh, that's a newer one. Right. That's a newer one. And it's nothing to do with sound quality, right, right. but more to do with the evolution right. of Slacky right. and, how, and how it's gone to different spaces. Um, yeah. I want to get to a, a question. Unless, Sunny, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, well, a lot, a lot of, well, you know what, what I, I, one of the first things I noticed, like when I was really learning is, and that back in when I was younger, um, all of the great slacky players, they would come on, they do, they would do a, like one library series, they would travel to all the islands. So I got to see, um, Leonard Kwan and Raymond Connie. So Raymond Connie, to me, was the epitome of the hammer on pull off because he right. did his hammer ons up. Yeah, weird, not yeah. down, and, yeah. and, and but the thing have a unique. It had such a unique song that was okay. So every time I hear that, I noticed that's Ray Connie because right. of the way he did it, and I, and the only guys who would do it after him would be his students. Right, no. and I talked to, um, about that with Bobby today, Madero, right. and I said, you know, I was talking about this genealogy uh -huh. of playing. You know, like how you right. play the like uh, Santi Allen. Yep. You know, when you watch the Raymond Kane students, when they do their hammer on pull offs, they're not going down. You know, Bobby does that, and you go, oh, like, like Raymond Kane, you learn from Raymond. Right. You know, you learn from Uncle Raymond. So, the, yeah, there's definitely those styles. I want to get to a couple of the questions that are on there. I think they're uh, good questions. Um, and, and maybe this one has to do with Kuleana because that's what we're kind of talking about. Uh, it says, are there any, and we'll start with Sunny and then go to Ron. Are there any particular Kiho Alu songs or song that you feel you carry a great kuleana for today and for the future? And what advice about keeping the tradition intact would you tell new players today? So sorry, sorry. Uh, to me, I still teach. Um, the first thing I, will, I teach and I still teach you today is almost like hula. First is the foundation. Um, you know, this is the simplest form of it. And I can and then I'll I'll take it beyond that, you know, into, into the contemporary style and everything. But I, I still think even if you're learning when younger student wants to learn now, I think we still I think our Kuleana is to make sure that they know the foundation of Slacky. And then, you know, as Uncle Fred taught me, that was I give you the tools as a teacher. And then you gotta build your own house. You gotta paint your own picture. You got to do all this thing. But at the same time, that still come down to the basics of the beginning of Kiwalu. And then from there on, that's up to you. He, he's, he's Manao that was that. He said, even though Lettered, you know, Nettered, they all played. And now I teach you how to play. He said, everybody, y'all, the way you play is going to be one reflection of your character in the way that you can play that's going to be you is the way you can play your guitar like come well you can play your guitar the way you can play your guitar yeah. Larry plays the way he can play and it's based around like your personal character of yourself so you actually play in reflection of it so the feeling that you get when you play that's that's the outcome the, or that's your picture that you have painted that, that's so funny that you say that because you know i used to not that it's ever a negative thing, but I remember when people used to tell me, oh, you play like Ledward. In my <laughs> mind, I would think, I don't think I do, you know? And, and, and I would say, I don't, I, you know, like, I mean, obviously when I'm playing, if I play Monolaw Slacky or Just Press, then yeah, obviously you can hear that because that's who I learned from watching Ledward, right? But when I play the other stuff and people give me solos, for me personally, I don't hear, I, I hear something unique, you know, and, and what I, what I talked to Lederman about a couple of times, I said, and, and he agreed, I said, you know, because I don't play like him. I don't think I play all his licks, you know, the same like him. Maybe when I was younger, I used to, you know, try to real copy him, but he, he told me, he said, you know, the thing that he liked about my playing was that I approached music like him in the sense that I just had fun. I never overthink, you know, the just press element was still there, you know. Um, and so the approach, like you said, the licks, you know, so like Uncle Fred said, you give you the tools, but everyone paint how they paint. So like now when I hear my playing, I don't really hear Ledward anymore 
other than in the approach to the music. Right. So, so the way you felt is the same way I felt when the guys tell me, "Hey, you play like that," and I think to myself, mm, "Yeah, really," and not because I know the, I know the mana or where it came from. So, right. I mean, to me, it's like, yeah, we kind of sound alike, but then again, we know it. Like how you know, I know that I know we don't play alike. Yeah, we approach you know, the, sounds, the, yeah. the same energy and the same yes. feel, but it's 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 different. Yeah, we paint so on a different picture. Right, right. <laughs> um, so, Ron, what are uh, fast that same question? Are there any particular styles or things that you feel Kuleano over now in your playing? Uh, well, yeah, one of the things I I kind of emphasize, you know, as a teacher of Kihualo is. Um, really getting the slides down. I mean, that's, that's what's unique to home. Uh, okay. And um, you want to demonstrate what you what you mean? Well, yeah. So those little slides in there, really to me, um, are critical. For your for the style that you play, that's the right. One of the that's things. reminiscent of the uh, Amakilua style. Also, the sound that I grew up listening to Ray Connie play. Right. You know, we we all try to play by ear, take it right off the album. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. <laughs> um, Sonny, you want to give a dem? I've had Ron demonstrate a couple of things. Do you want to demonstrate? Uh, oh, you demonstrated one. You want to demonstrate something on on your end? Um. Yeah. I'll, I'll, you you know, yeah. I'm doing really. It's really quick since I'm in this tuning. This is Uncle Fred. Okay. So we, yeah. it was was the, his his thing was about being like the showman, and you yeah. know, like that letter is like the ultimate show. I thought, you know, and Uncle. You know, every time I see Larry play, he to me he's like one splitting image of Uncle Fred. I can see Uncle Fred sitting there playing, okay. Because my Uncle Fred was kind of an innovator too at the same time. Because when I saw him, he was he grabbed beer bottles, mic stands, um, baseball cap, and he used it for play his guitar. And when you guys see him do do stuff like that, uh, I was like lettered in and and lettered. But so this is Uncle Fred's um, song called the Punahou Special with some of the little fancy licks that he always, he, you know, he used to always do. And if you feel like stopping, like, you know, pointing something out as you're playing it, if you want to say this is one that he would, you know, this part, you know, yeah. feel free okay. to do that. You don't have to play it all the way through if you want. Go on. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Like Uncle Fred's Famous, doing their baseline runs was just famous, so even like in Mauna Loa, so that was like that was like Uncle Fred's thing, you know. That was like his, his uh, show off points of the uh, slacky bass run, yeah, yeah, bass run. yeah, awesome. Okay, let's look at this uh question, it's an interesting one. Jamie asks, How do you keep track of all the tunings? Um, it seems like you're learning a whole new instrument slash fretboard with every change. How do you decide which tuning to use for a particular song? Uh, Ron, you want to go first on that question? 
Uh, I guess the, the thing is, if you have a, a favorite song, then you think about the characteristic of the tuning and then try to arrange it in that tuning. Yeah. You know, um, I, I want to go back to it at Namaki Lua tuning, and this is the one I learned. I must have taken forever to learn it because there was no video to watch. You just watch and learn. And uh, eventually, I came to appreciate something else from my teacher in Amakilo, and that was to sing in the Hawaiian language. Because after I learned to play a couple of tunings, she would tell me, ah, too bad you're only telling half the story. Oh, I love it. That, that just kind of irked me, like, isn't it, you know, that I'm playing this lucky? And she said, oh, we no hoi, you know? And so once I learned this tuning of hers, it must have taken me all of like about six months to learn the song Kamanu, sing and play. Yeah, you and, wanna do yeah. Well, I'll give you a demonstration, but okay. why I go to this song as a song that I teach all my students is because it's uniquely Hawaiian. I can tell you what the words mean. And she grilled me. I don't know if the Hawaiian is excellent, but you know, if you learn from the Makilo, man, she gave you the gas. <laughs> she she was unrelenting. It had to be just just so. You know? Yeah. And the song is Kamanu. Okay. Sorry about two lovers, one from Kohala, one from Hilo. The girl's parents didn't like the idea of her someday moving away from them. And so they put a stop to it. Uh, so when the guy was in his about 40s or 50s, he met Auntie Alice, who then was a teenager. And he told his story about how he fell in love, but the girl's parents were not really supportive of the whole endeavor and put a stop to it. And so he wrote a song. This guy wrote a song and he shared the song with Auntie Alice. And in the first verse, it says, where are you, my darling? Kamanu is the guy waiting for the wahine. They had agreed to meet at a rendezvous, but the girl never showed up. And the guy figured, well, I guess that's it. And so he's waiting in the cold. And in the second verse, they say, it's cold. Night air is nothing to my mind because my desire for her is strong. First verse, come on. Now. Then the last verse goes to Aina. Uh, story is told, goodbye, ka ua, me ka eha eha means we part, which is really sad, heavy heart. And so that's one of the songs I, I teach. Yeah, there's Kuleana in that song. Comes from the Makilo. Right, right. Um, Sunny, uh, you can if you can go ahead and unmute one more time. I muted you while you were tuning. Um, how do you keep the? You can unmute your um, mic, Sunny. Um, I. How do you keep your tunings 
straight in your mind or what uh you know when you're learning a new tuning i know sometimes i have this if i go from playing uh something uh i won't know you know it, like if i haven't played in a particular tuning for a while and then i try to play it sometimes it takes a minute you have to like okay wait you gotta like rub your eyes real clean and like okay now i can play in this tuning yeah like real job how do you do it sonny um and i've been asked that question you know like a few times i and i think because i started slacky before i played standard every it, it's not i don't i don't really worried about how the guitar is tuned um my mother always that i know even when on on alternate tuning it was slacky tuning um the shapes don't change that much they might move they might move up a string they might move down a string so yeah so for me my my, my mother always really i can like just by like playing the strings i can i know kind of where they already are yeah, which yeah. is with some some people think it's really strange but i don't i yeah because i i think i thought in slack key before i started thinking in standard tuning so for me kind of makes sense which is why i play maybe six or seven active tunings like all the time and the other part is the more you do it if you play like all the time it's a lot easier to transition yeah, from one to the next right like the g tuning if you play the d tuning right or you know uh, like jerry santos his tuning the e one you just move all the turnarounds up a string like you there's one you know one string so he's going extra string on the bottom so it the, it doesn't change uh, a whole lot so which is why i'll usually if i do like one slacky show i'll either start in standard and then i'll tool on the way down to the tarot patch Wahine, I'll go to D, and then I'll end up like in this open B flat, which is the lowest. Or not, I'll start B flat, and I'll work my way wow. back up to standard, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and just go through the steps of the different tunings. But even for this, like, you know, we, we all know that that's the tuning, and then to make it Wahine, we're just going, it's just like the one string. So which are and you in D now? So I'm actually in B flat. So this is now this is from one from a standard B flat to the B flat Wahini to me. Yeah. Right. And then, and you know, just, and a lot of this is like a, a lot of these old players they're really smart, man. It's almost, not like sleight of hand, but it's the the way that the thing is played. They could actually get away without actually actually doing that, without actually doing the slide. Yeah. You know. They would just cut short. Yeah, right, right. And you think, oh. you, actually, you might think, oh, I heard the slide. No, you never hear the slide. It, it didn't even happen. <laughs> so is that the tuning? So there are people that play different styles, you know, like newer composition is Slacky. One right. song that I know I've heard you play is, I think, is it called Slacky Rag? Oh yeah, the uh, Pahana Rag. And, yeah, Pahana Rag. And the funniest thing is when I when I did that song Pahana Rag, it started off actually in Tarot Patch. And I think song, I started off like on kind of like a blues kind of song. And I, you know, and I tried for the longest time because I, I was listening to this recording, and I think it was George Cool and um I can't name one of the I think it was Keep Up or Rush, I think was the name of the group. Oh yeah, yeah with Rainbow. But, yeah, so but they did this song was sounded like one, one blues kind of slacky thing. So I'm thinking, oh, I was kind of thinking around, along the lines of that, but I tried in the thing. I had the melody, but it just the thing wouldn't work. And then, like one night out of blue, I'm like lying in bed, in the middle of the night, and I, get, you know, I do this every, you know, every once in a while. I'm gonna get my guitar and I'm gonna start playing in the dark and uh, and scare my wife, cause she hear music playing in the dark and that's me. I just play my guitar, and I decided to try and do it in this tuning. But then when I started to play it. It kind of took on its life. It, it kind of came into the rag time. And then it, everything that fit like took like you know, seven minutes. The whole thing was done. But it just, yeah. it just that way of playing it and that melody fit um, this tuning in that style. You want to try play uh, or at least a portion of that song? Yeah, okay. 
Well, yes. So, yeah, I feel like I'm about to get ice cream right now. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Pharaohs. We always had the, the ragtime music. Yeah, the ragtime music. Huh? I'm like, where's my Sunday? I mean, that song. I'm like, it's coming. I feel it. They're going to ring the bell. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and, I think so, yeah, and I think another reason why it kind of happened that way was I, I, in my, while I was thinking about it, I remember walking through Disneyland. And I was walking by the end of tomorrow, and yeah. the guy was playing the piano. And this guy was all just up with his, the guy, and he was playing the piano in the same style. And I, I, you know, when I did it, I, I never knew that what ragtime was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when I recorded the song, Charles Bobby told me, hey, you know, that's like a, the style, like a ragtime. So that's how I named the song the Pahana Rag. Yeah. You can help you with that one. Small mono, small mono. <laughs> okay, this next question is for Ron from Evelyn. Evelyn asks, when you were first learning, how much, and both of you can answer this one, how much time did you spend practicing? I practiced a lot, but um, unfortunately, what I practiced was not what my teacher wanted because I had no notes, I had no tape. And I had never heard that ditty that Namaki Lua played. Yeah. But, you know, uh, each time I finished a lesson, I would run to my car, try to write something down in tab, and hope that it was close enough, you know. And, and I think after, like, two weeks, I think she delivered the ultimatum and said to me, you know, I don't, I don't know if, you know, back key is for you because... This is the second lesson, and you still don't know it. You you still don't play like the way I play. Two you lessons know? already. You gotta play like me, and and, and I I was like, oh please don't don't cut I, me. I, I I'll be better. I promise I'll I'll be your best student. I'll, I'll work hard. I may not be your best student, but I'll work really hard. And she relented, and I think the fourth week I ran to my car, I tabbed something, and then. At the next lesson, she said, now that's, that's getting closer, but not there yet, because I wasn't using the right fingers on the left hand and the right hand. So it had to be exactly what she was doing, or it wasn't a goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sonny, how much did you practice when you were first learning? Uh, I was like when kid in candy store. I was like, almost every waking moment I had, I would be... I'll be stuck with that first guitar by the clock, by the wall, with the thing against the, my body against the wood. And, I, and the guy, as, as I was learning, I just wanted to learn like more, more. And then when I'm, I mean, and um, it's funny what Ron said, because Uncle Fred was, was a little bit different. When I, when I met Uncle Fred, he told me, okay, I'm going to show you how to play this, but you only use this as one guide. Cause I don't like you play exactly. Like, I don't like you play like me. I like you play like you would play the song. And that was a, and I, I don't think he only taught that to me. I think he taught that to Leonard and Leonard too. So the thing I, he said, I'll, I'll show you how to play it, but I don't want you to have to, I don't want you to play it exactly like the way I play. I want you to play it back to me how you would play it. Even though it's kind of in the beginning, it was kind of rough, but he said, "No worry. You going? He said, "You going? You going to find your own? You going to find your own way eventually, and that's going to be what is right for you." And, and that's the way I'm going to fight. Because both are difficult, right? Yeah. Both of those right. teaching styles, like neither is like 
like so one is like you played exactly like me and one is like go make them how you hear them but on the other so on one side it's like okay but it's hard i gotta get everything and on on the other side it's like wait but i don't know what i'm supposed to play like show me exactly yeah. how you want me to play so both have their contrast and, and to go mm -hmm. along with what sunny said um i actually feel very similar for me when i was learning music ukulele guitar i can't I mean, there was no, um, there was no like, uh, how much time am I going to, like, it was as much time as my mom then would let me hold an instrument. <laughs> so I remember one time, so my technique was both my parents are music majors, right? And my mom could play the ukulele a little bit. My dad could really play and, and guitar. And I remember I was so irritated. None of them wanted me to, wanted to teach me something. Mm -hmm. So I sat there on the couch and I played La Bamba. <laughs> Literally, you can, this is true story. I played La Bamba probably for an hour straight. So and, and I would go da 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 and I would play it like I'm not exaggerating to the point. I remember vividly my mom was washing clothes in the hall. And I was like, nobody like teach me. I was going to keep playing. My mom comes out. She's like, if I hear those three chords one more time, I'm going to break that ukulele. So I told my mom, I was like, well, mom, teach me something then. And so that night, I remember still to this day, I learned Lady of Spain. Da, 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 da. That was my first bar chords I learned. Right, da, da, in D. And so it's funny because like, like you said, I was irritating to my family because remember I tell this in my class like when when I was young when we were young never have DVR yeah right. so you know if my family's watching TV and I'm playing <laughs> ukulele in the back before if you miss the joke you miss the joke like there's no like wait they're gonna rewind if everyone's laughing like what they said what they said if you missed it you missed it <laughs> so my dad now that I'm a parent I know what he was doing he had all these he was so creative he had all these tasks for me like, you're not going to help you. So he would tell me this one. I remember this one vividly. Genius. He'd tell me, you know, it's really going to help you. You got to go in your room, close the curtains, turn off the lights, and close the door, and practice playing in the dark. Going to help you so that you don't need to look at your hands. <laughs> and while it's great advice, now as a parent, I know he was just kicking me out of the room. <laughs> and he had one strategy where he never needs to say, stop playing. Because he never, like, tell me, stop playing. <clears throat> He's like, I don't get him out. He's driving me nuts. I cannot hear my show. Go play in the dark. So I go play in the dark and I'm like, yeah. And I'll do that. Like, how long I would play in the dark? He had all kinds of those techniques. So I think to answer that question, um, the beautiful thing about music and about kuleana, and maybe we'll close with this and I'll have each of you share one last thought. Um, When Gabby was learning, or when, when Cyril, Cyril would share this with me all the time, and you were close, we were all close with Cyril. Mm -hmm. um, I know you were close with Gabby as well. Mm -hmm. when, when Cyril um, would share with me that when Gabby would come home from his gigs, he would detune his guitars. Yeah? Because <laughs> he, the boy, he said, you know, because my dad, you know, come on along. My dad never liked them go learn his tunings. Right. And, and in our day, we hear that and we go, what a mean dad. Yeah, like, oh, why, wow, why, why, why he never teaches kids the tuning? But in the old Hawaiian worldview, and this goes back to don't ask questions, and even Auntie Alice Namakelua's thoughts of teaching you, is with everything, there's kuleana. There's, like, what are, and kuleana is not responsibility, but it's also, like, what is your calling? What are you meant to do? And in, I'm, I'm sure in Gabby's mind and Auntie Alice's mind, it's like, if I force music to you, and you're not supposed to play music, I might be, pushing you off where you what your actual kuleana is. So in learning music, I know for me, I, I couldn't play enough. You know, I, I would play, I tell the story of playing with my dad mm -hmm. when I was seven years old at, in Waikiki. And I went with him to a gig before. So, and I only knew two chords, <laughs> F and second F, <laughs> AKA C7. So I only knew those two chords. So I play boom, 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 and I go C7, F, second half, F, second half. And then my finger got a blister. 
And I was like, oh, my finger is sore. <laughs> so I started playing like that. And I would play so loud. And I would stand next to my dad on stage. And I only know two chords. You could be in G. I'm going to play F and C7, right? <laughs> loud with all my heart. So then I had another blister. And then, so I had blister on three fingers, my thumb, my pointer, and my middle. So my dad, without telling me, stop playing. He says, oh, come on, maybe you should go sit down, rest your fingers. Because I uh, guarantee, now that I play music, I know that must have been so annoying <laughs> to have someone play loud F and C7 for every song. He said, hey, maybe go rest your fingers. So I looked at my dad, and to this day, I remember, my dad tells, tells this story too. I looked at him and said, I still got these two. <laughs> you know, because for me, as a young kid, I, I just wanted to play so bad with my dad that, like, I blister, blister, blister. And I, and I still had these. I was like, no, I, I, still, I still got these two. You know, and that's how badly I wanted to play. And that's where I felt my kuleana was, was in playing music. So I guess we'll end with um, having each of you, if, if you, um, we'll start with Sunny. Um, a lot of the people in this particular, so we have people in this room with us watching, also in the Zoom, uh, are learning slack key. Um, what advice do you have for these people who are just learning slack key? Well, um, maybe one, one question you should ask yourself is um, why are you learning slack key should be um, a good point. And then the other thing is, um, you know, if it's your passion to do it, um, then it's, it's something that you will you will drive you to to get to that point because pretty I'm pretty much I was like you I just couldn't you know I played with my parents and my drive was to you know to play and I just wanted to play I never care what I played it's just long I was playing and I was happy and and so for me my first instrument playing with my parents I was actually I used to stand on my kitchen chair and play the upright bass that was because I was too short. But I knew where the cause was, so that was my my first thing. And so when I got into Slacky, it kind of came almost like one kind of an obsession kind of thing. But I want you know I, I just love the way it sounded, and that's the beauty for me of Slacky. All the different tunings, they all have a unique sound and stuff that um, that makes me happy, and I you know and I love to do it. And not to say that, you know, by learning Slacky, you need to be the virtuoso and just do that. Because Slacky, with some of the most beautiful chords you can create, is actually good to, um, to accompany singing um, at the same time. So there's many different ways you can use Slacky, um, you know, to the best of your ability. You don't have to learn everything. You know, just take, you know, as, as time goes by, you're going you're gonna to learn more and more as you go, you know. And some will learn faster than others. So, you know, it, it, to me, is that take it to heart and it becomes a passion of yours. Um, I'll learn it and I'll live it and enjoy the journey. Perfect. Uh, Ron, what advice? Now, you taught Slacky at Windward. Mm -hmm. You're probably one of the first people offering Slacky at the college level, period. You know, um, what advice do you have? You've had a lot of young Kiho Alu players come right. through your right. learning. Well, I think the thing is, um, is uh, to, to find a song that you like and to find a teacher that will share the rudiments of that song with you. Meaning that, unlike my own mentor, Ante Alice, uh, you need somebody to show you a few times and maybe have some kind of um, learning tool. And I won't define that, right. but a whip. the tool oh, can no, be no. a video or can be a, 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 you know, a tab. Realizing that the video and the tab are a means, but it's not the end that the student still has to be the one 
to put the feeling into the music and to really get the essence, the ego of what's there. Right. Thank you. So thank you, Sunny. Uh, thank you, Ron, for being a part of this. I hope that everyone was, has a, a deeper understanding and, and appreciation for Kiho, all of those of you that joined us, whether live now or whether you um, weren't able to make it live and are watching the recording later. Um, I appreciate these two. Uh, Sonny, I've looked up to him for a long time as a musician, traveling with Sonny and Ron Lu. Uh, truthfully, uh, he goes under the radar a lot. And, and I just, I want him to know, and I hope we all know, we have a lot to be grateful for Ron Lu. Uh, he really pushed at Windward. He was the person who started our music at Windward. He pushed for music. When, they, when you see slack key classes, those classes were created by the man to my left. Um, at a time when other campuses, other colleges weren't giving credit for slack key or for ukulele. So I know with my job at the university, and I hope you know how grateful I am for your influence um, and, and that it's not forgotten and that you know, things that you have done, just like the slack key masses of the past, continue to resonate throughout, you know, the all college of, level. So, those kind words. yes. So thank you. Thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, uh, mahalo, everyone. And uh, we hope to see you next year. Next year, Windward will be hosting this. Um, those of you that live near or far, just a little plug, since no one else is here from any other campus, Windward Community College. We have our full online one-year Hawaiian music certificate. It's asynchronous. A number of you who are here are a part of that, um, that program. This coming year, our program will feature uh, courses from myself, uh, Frank Hewitt, uh, Raiatea Helm, and Kapena de Lima, who are all going to be a part of teaching this cohort that will start in August. So if you're interested, uh, my email is in the chat. You can copy and paste it somewhere. Um, you can reach out to me and I can send you some information about our program and when it starts, what, how much it costs, uh, all the details. Uh, we're gonna have some information sessions coming up in the next uh, couple weeks. So thank you all. For being here with us. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you, Ron. Mahalo Nui. Thank you, guys. Okay. Aloha. Sunny. Aloha. I love you, brother. Love you, too. You too. Okay. Aloha. Take care, everyone. Aloha. Aloha.